So we'll be moving on to our next talk. Uh, we're gonna be hearing from Arteris IP and the speaker will be uh, Michael Frank. He actually uh, received his master's, in si uh, master's of science from the uh, Technische Universität uh, at Darmstadt. And he serves as a fellow and chief architect over at uh, Arteris IP. For serving at Arteris IP, he was a fellow AMD -er, uh, worked also at Apple and LG and uh, has over 60 patents. Michael, I hope my German wasn't too bad. <laughs> and uh, take it away. Yeah, uh, thanks for the introduction. Uh, good morning, everyone. As you heard, my name is Michael Frank. I'm fellow and chief architect at IPARIS. Uh, my talk will be about heterogeneous cache coherent interconnects. In the past, we have seen progress in semiconductor technology that has enabled us to build highly complex SOCs, well, either as a monolithic chip, which are now going up to the size of a reticle, or as an assembly of chiplets. As I said, in the past, we have seen progress in the semiconductor technology, and this has enabled us to build really complex chips with uh, going up to the size of reticles or uh, even multi-chip uh, using uh, chiplets in a package. But these SOCs nowadays are typically patchworks made of a large number of processors combined with accelerators and other supporting IP blocks. And some of them are uh, either carried over from previous designs. That means you have older technologies, older IP with older interfaces. Some are built from scratch or acquired by external or from external IP vendors. So I want to discuss uh, how heterogeneous cache coherent networks uh, enable combining agents from different coherent interface standards within the same uh, coherency domain. So this presentation is uh, divided in five parts. I'll give a short introduction to Arteris and then we'll descend from a high level system view all the way down to the components of our interconnect. And finally, I'll give a brief outlook on three of our current R&D topics and show how they will complement in the future our current NOC development. So IPRS, Arteris has uh, been around for quite a while. Uh, we have about 150 customers. About 100 of them are currently active and they can be coarsely binned into five groups. Uh, each group has different requirements. We have automotive customers that want high performance for advanced driver support systems, resilience and reliability. We have AI and machine learning customers. They need high performance and support for many parallel compute units. We have IoT customers that demand uh, low power and small die areas for cost reasons mostly. And servers that need high performance, I use many cores, especially new ARM cores, and chip-to-chip -chip interconnect to build scalable systems. And we have also uh, some upcoming 5G devices and mobile base stations that require high data throughput and low latency uh, interconnect. So Ateris is trying to address all these requirements and uh, support a wide range of designs. So let's start with a 100,000 foot view uh, of a generic SOC. Uh, to many people, this is not new, but uh, the I SOC is typically made up of a uh, lot of IP blocks, such as processors, GPUs, IOs, and peripherals. They're all connected by a central interconnect, and the IPs communicate through this interconnect. Without interconnect, in fact, there is no chip. And here in this example, in the center, you have the NOC interconnect. And inside the SOCs, there are multiple types of interconnects. In fact, we have non-coherent, which are uh, shown in this tan color. We have coherent interfaces that connect to a coherent interconnect on the left side. And the key characteristic of the interconnects is that it basically carries the uh, trans it's transporting the uh, information between all system components and is made up of the important wires. So 
interface and interconnect configurations may in fact change several times during the design phase as architecture matures and converges, which means you need to have also tools to uh, optimize and uh, configure these systems. So Arteris has two products in the NOC space to support this. So we have Encore, which is a coherent interconnect, and we have FlexNOC at this time, which is a non-coherent interconnect, and they both uh, may communicate with each other. And FlexNOC is very often uh, even present in a higher level of hierarchies within blocks. So heterogeneous coherency, in fact, uh, most people in the audience probably know about uh, coherency. Uh, it's a contract between all participating agents, mainly a contract that promises that uh, memory accesses will always provide the most recent data. Heterogeneous coherency is the same, uh, except that participants may use different coherency protocols. This is equivalent to each one signing up for this contract, but in a different language. Yet the promise is the same and the contract must be kept. So big systems integrate IP coming from many sources, as I mentioned before. Uh, QS is uh, very important. So we need to provide service guarantees for traffic. We have to manage power. We have to think about topology for the switches, routers, and the wiring. And all this is a big challenge, especially the different cache protocols. Uh, designs are mixing IP with different uh, views of the world, like MSI, Messi, and Mercy. And in the past, uh, we had to deal with uh, big little Indian issues. But today, we have these problems that are much more subtle and uh, functional correctness is an issue and verification for our designs, especially if you have many different configurations that you can generate from the uh, basic system become a major burden. So this is not a trivial problem. So efficient and correct implementation of each of the protocols, uh, the semantics is required to achieve and guarantee interoperability and correct functionality. So we solve this problem by using our own uh, proprietary uh, protocol. Now, I get into this one. So as I said, it's not just uh, coherency that needs to be considered. Uh, more heterogeneity in a system exists and uh, we have more problems with that. So here's an example of that complex SOC. So in the center is the interconnect and uh, ordered around it, you can see different agents that have different uh, requirements. So let's start from the left with a simple interface, a core side debug interface that usually is uh, combined with the processors. Then you have two processor clusters uh, typically nowadays using Chai uh, interface. <clears throat> you have a GPU that is uh, probably having its own caches, so it needs a coherent interface. And very often this comes now with ACE. We have uh, video decoders or encoders in the system. Nowadays, you have very often machine learning engines, uh, accelerators. You have display engines that are uh, connecting uh, the, to outside displays. And then at the bottom, you see uh, a couple of slow clients like uh, modems or Wi-Fi interfaces, uh, PCI uh, probably as a interface to external uh, systems using a slide. And you have two memory controllers, which in the future uh, will most likely use Chai to provide proper uh, QS uh, from end to end. So all this uh, is to serve a heterogeneous group of agents that have also different uh, requirements in service. So we have latency sensitive CPUs, 
we have bandwidth sensitivity for the GPU, we have typically soft real-time uh, requirements and bandwidth requirements for video encoders and decoders because they have to meet a deadline of a frame every 16 milliseconds or so. And we have high bandwidth agents like the machine learning engine that is uh, needing a lot of data and performance will be impacted if you don't provide the bandwidth. The hardest to deal with is in fact uh, the hard real-time uh, traffic for displays because if you do not meet the requirements of latency, you'll end up with functional uh, problems rather than just performance impact. And the uh, memory interfaces, they are the eventual uh, target of QoS requirements and have to deal with it somehow. Now, let's go a step uh, closer into the NOC internals. What we usually have is we have these groups of different uh, protocols. In the first example on these two slides, uh, we will have one example of a, a coherent site. Let's focus there. So we have two uh, coherent agents, a processor cluster, for example, with a Chai interface and another agent with a ACE interface, for example, a GPU or another older uh, processor type. In fact, ACE is based on AXI, uh, an older interface, adding a few signals and a snoop interface. So it's a forward development while Chai is a modern flip-based interface protocol. And there are other uh, coherency protocols that might be interesting in the future. Both protocols are kind of similar in their function, but yet different in the way they provide coherency. And uh, we are supporting both, uh, which helps users to leverage existing investment, for example, into ACE IP. On the second uh, slide of this uh, pair, we show uh, non-coherent accelerators as peers. These can be either directly tied into the interconnect, uh, just sending non-coherent requests, but these are also served in the same interconnect, or by using an optional proxy cache uh, to improve performance, for example. The proxy cache receives requests from the non-coherent IP, caches their memory traffic on behalf of them. And uh, on the interconnect side, it fully participates in the coherency protocol. So this is a relatively simple way to beef up performance of existing agents that do not have their own cache. Uh, we see this very often in network and storage applications where you have a lot of uh, existing IP or in machine learning where you have to uh, deal with uh, large coefficient matrices that are uh, showing heavy uh, reuse and uh, this is a very important uh, feature of caches. Uh, the directory service is uh, on the left side and this basically manages the internal coherency protocol by having snoop filters and in fact, it allows you also to instantiate a system cache. Now we have looked at the high uh, system level. Let's go uh, one step deeper now to the say, thousand foot or view. Okay, and this is strange. Okay, now. So in this view, basically the interconnect is shown uh, by itself. We have the transport in the center and arranged uh, around that uh, transport. You see all the protocol adapters. Uh, these are translating the native uh, interface protocol of the connected IP to our internal protocol and back. They also take care of uh, managing priorities and other things for QoS. They initiate agents uh, 
are shown at the top. For example, uh, ChiB connecting to CPU clusters or AXI or a slide agents. Uh, target agents are shown at the bottom. We have different versions available. Uh, for example, uh, the DMI is one to uh, facilitate the memory interface. So multiple instances of these CCE blocks that make up the directory service uh, may be uh, instantiated. And uh, they're again shown on the left side. Yeah, as already mentioned, uh, these manage the coherence protocol in the NRC. They have the snoop filters, uh, local or global snoop filters, and they implement the system level, last level caches. So in this example, we also show on the right side a possible chip-to-chip uh, -chip interface. So if customers need uh, to connect multiple chips into a single system, for example, uh, with chiplets, this is implementing a low latency tunnel to combine uh, multiple of our transport interconnects to look like one and basically make up a big combined coherent domain. So now let's look a little bit closer. Uh, in the next slide, I'll show an example of a, a complex transaction in our common cache coherency protocol, where we have two Chai agents on the left side communicating with our uh, local domain and a memory controller on the right side, again, using a Chai interface. So the Chai agent number zero at the left side uh, sends a read transfer request. This transfer is received by our uh, agent, here we call it AIU, uh, is translated into our internal protocol equivalent of this uh, transaction. In the snoop filter, it has a hit for that address, which causes the CCE to send a snoop request uh, back to a snooped agent, in this case via another snooped AIU, that, which forwards the snoop request in Chai uh, protocol to Chai agent number one, which is the second from the left. Chai agent number one responds with partial data in this case, which is then forwarded to the CCE and put into a buffer to between the cache and the uh, memory. Since this is only partial data, we also need to fetch the missing part of the data uh, from memory. So we send a non-coherent read uh, to the DMI, which is translated into a read no snoop on the Chai domain side. And eventually the memory controller will respond with a missing data. Uh, this data will be forwarded to the CCE where it's combined uh, with the partial data from the previous snoop and the combined data will then return via the initiator AIU all the way to the Chai agent zero on the left side. Michael, we're actually running a bit short on time. Can you, uh, would you be able to? Sure, I'll speed up. Yeah. Thank you so much. I mean, I'm so sorry, I appreciate it, thank you. No problem, yeah. So finally, uh, we, we went through the higher levels. Finally, a closer view at the interconnect itself. Um, as different systems have different uh, performance requirements, our NOC supports a variety of interconnect topologies. We support a tree topology that can be optimized for the lowest number of wires or provide low latency. We uh, support uh, ring topologies for high bandwidth and redundant connectivity. And we support mesh and torus configuration for regular processor or accelerator areas. So typically we provide uh, low latency uh, than rings, lower latency than rings, but at the expense of more area and power. And hybrid configurations combining any of those are possible in our flexible uh, configuration. Now, we also have configurable switches, and to optimize the number of switches and 
to support uh, the large variety of different possible topologies. We're not using corner routers, we're using uh, highly configurable switches where the number of inbound and outbound ports is configurable. Uh, this will be providing the best switch for a job or chosen topology. This all leads to better uh, performance, area, and power. So now that we have reached the component level, uh, let's talk how to manage the complexity of the highly configurable NOC and create the best architecture. Uh, this is uh, addressed by Maestro, our configuration cockpit. Uh, in a guided step-by-step -step process, uh, the NOC configuration, uh, interface agents, and all parameters are entered. And uh, visual matrix representation is then used to enter connectivity between agents. System C simulation to validate configuration. Uh, we allow topology synthesis in the future. We are uh, working in our R&D in cache coherency, and we are supporting die-to-die -die, uh, connectivity in our next round. So uh, concluding, uh, we are enabling uh, ACE and CHI, it should be an E protocols in the same system to increase IP reuse. We have flexible NOC topologies with configurable switches, which allows more optimal data flow and uh, better PPA than corner router and cost point switches. Uh, we have integrated GUI configurability and systems performance analysis which allows you quick what-if analysis. And future technologies enable system scaling with uh, NOC topology synthesis, hierarchical coherence, and die-to-die -die connectivity. Thank you. Nox are the unsung heroes of <laughs> SOCs, and you giving the level of detail that you did is very much appreciated. Thank you so much for bringing so much color to it. So I'm going to just jump into the questions because they're starting to pile up. Oh. Um, so how how does your NOC um, understand the topology of uh, what it's being connected to? Uh, this is what I was trying to show in the um, uh, <laughs> maestro slides, Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> where you uh, basically configure the number of agents, the uh, configuration of the the agents, uh, you configure the interface type, the requirements in bandwidth and uh, width of the interfaces, and you configure the connectivity by filling out uh, these connectivity matrix where each of these cross points represents a flow. So you can uh, actively determine and uh, program the number and the interconnect uh, between these flows. And the system will then generate uh, the flow, uh, the routing tables and all this by itself. And in the next generation, so we're working now in R&D in topology synthesis, where we go and uh, take the information from physical representation of the uh, IP, where you have the size of the IP, the uh, location of the IP and uh, interconnect points and we automatically uh, place the switches and find the optimal routing channels. And we have an example that uh, by far beats the human, humanly generated uh, pattern. So we have time for one more question. And I just want everyone to, I want to remind everyone, please reach out to Michael if you have more questions, yeah. because he, he's the guy, he's given great technical detail. So how do you maintain uh, timing uh, upon, with all your heterogeneous components and your uh, NOC? How do you keep everything timing aware and timing clean? Uh, what do you mean by timing clean in the sense? It's a centralized, uh, well, we have uh, non-coherent and coherent uh, uh, requests entering into this domain, but mm -hmm. uh, we have asynchronous uh, adapters in between as well. So we can go and have each of these agents that comes in uh, to run in its own clock domain. And at this point, we have also the capability within the uh, NOC 
to have uh, clock boundaries and uh, close timing individually. Okay, uh, I, I think that answers the question. So I wanna just say uh, thank you for your time. I wanna just let everybody know, please reach out to him. Uh, please ask all your knock questions to him. He's the guy to go to. Thank you.